This next piece may be one of the hardest things I've ever had to verbalize, both to myself out loud and to everybody else. Come here, Lynn. Come. Come. Come join me in space. Come on. Come on. No, I don't want you drinking the yucky water. I made a decision, although this decision was made nine years ago for me, for him. For a while now, I've gone by the name Sigil. Sigil is the magic. Sigil is the, uh, the wizard, the occultist. By definition, a sigil, like the Superman S, or the Batman emblem, it's a sign. It's a sigil. It's a symbol that represents something. Because when the person dies, the symbol lives on, and anybody can represent the symbol. A sigil, a magical seal, not too indifferent than a pentagram or the cross, means manifesting your dreams into reality. Now the name sigil is exactly what it is. It's a sigil. It's not who I am. It's what I do. It's what I was born to do. That's what I was gifted with. Who am I? Well, I guess as a superhero, it's time to have that talk now, isn't it? <clears throat> I have a scarlet rose on my, on my arm. A representation of a woman I loved very, very deeply. We lived together for a short period of time and we raised her two boys for about two years, two and a half years. And from there, I also had the blessing of living with another woman. And we raised two girls together for two years as well. And just for the trifecta, I have also had the obliged honorary privilege of living with my best friend of six years, coming up February 14th, for two and a half years, and we raised our two kids together. The mother of my child, Phoenix, we lived together for the pregnancy. We lived together long enough to get pregnant and for the pregnancy. And 11 years ago, for some of you who know my story, not too indifferent than how I ended up floating in space here, my narcissistic father made us homeless in the middle of winter and we ended up living at a hotel. It was the front desk girl, Melanie, who uh, inspired me to become a nutritionist here now. All this time later. I love being a dad. I love my family, I love my kids. The scarlet rose on my arm turned into the ultimate symbol of love for the woman who taught me how to love in the first place. And then as a representation of my daughter, who just happens to love Sailor Moon. And growing up, man, one of my favorite heroes, Tuxedo Mask, man, why not? Classy gentleman, no such, I mean, Darian was a fucking dickhead, but I mean, 
part of our alter ego, maleistic stuff isn't a fucking dickhead. Hence the phrasing, right? <clears throat> Whips roses at people like Joker throws the fucking ninja star fucking playing cards. That's cool. My daughter's middle name is Scarlet. My son just happens to love red as much as I love red. And the Red Power Ranger and Super Mario and all the other things that bond us together as a family, even though we're not biologically related. So who am I? My spirit animal is a fox. It's something I love intrinsically, very much so. They're the coolest animals, and you can pet them when they're wild. They're so friendly. They're smart, cunning, and they just happen to be really superior type thieves, too. Little foxes. Fox in the hand house, I mean, what better representation of uh, masculinity? So, as a hero, I'm the Scarlet Fox. And as explaining my life and my history and my family and my kids when I was raising my two boys with the woman who inspired the Scarlet Rose on my arm. As their youngest boy, whose biological father attempted to kill me nine years ago, bludgeoned my head to the point where I, he, the person I was before, was supposed to be permanently blinded in both eyes. To which I spent the last decade learning every healing technique in the book. Master Reiki practitioner, holistic health coach. You name it, I've studied it. I'm trying to heal myself. So who am I? I spent six years having amnesia. Who was I? I met my best friend who healed me back to health. I was like Wolverine, I didn't know who the fucking hell I was. I couldn't remember anything. Until she healed me. So the thing is, as part of this holistic health coach talk here, I'm gonna touch on a very, very, very sensitive topic called ambiguous guilt. People have been brain damaged survivors and been through post-concussion syndrome. People who have survived really, really horrible things that we weren't supposed to live through. The term ambiguous guilt is a very, very deep depiction of what survivor's guilt is. And the truth is, when you suffer the type of head injury and the brain damage that I have recovered from. Who I was before died, June 15th, 2014. It's a thing. I didn't know this until I started studying it. Brain damage survivors, the person who they were, the future that we had planned out and who we were supposed to be, dies. On the inside, in the brain wiring, and emotionally speaking, it is the exact same scientific feeling as the loss of a loved one, a parent or a child. And even though I survived physically on June 15th in the head injury and the attempted murder, Tristan Peterson died June 15th, 2014. And I spent a decade almost trying to figure out what that means and who I'm supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be anybody but myself. Ambiguous guilt stems into survivor's guilt in the sense where, like, I have a group of people who drown. The one guy who goes for help is the only one who lives. 
You have to live with that guilt for the rest of your life. And on the inside, psychologically speaking, going through psychotherapy and whatnot, it truly does feel that we should have died. And we don't deserve to live. And not only through almost 40 years of severe narcissistic abuse from my drunken abuse of father, that made me chronically suicidal from the age of seven to begin with. Suicidal ruminations and ideations got severely worse over the last decade, clearly. Not too many people know about ambiguous guilt, or what it means or represents. The death and the loss of who you are, or supposed to be. And the dreams and the future of everything that you lived to create, taken from you. healing journey. There is no recovery. It's not a recovery journey. Closest people with this kind of uh, head injury gets to experience. It's the recovery of how fast we can rapid cycle through our emotions and process all of this. Not to mention the research that I've done into the narcissistic abuse that actually causes brain damage and swells your amygdala. And it also shrinks your hippocampus. Living the last nine years literally stuck as a lifestyle in fight or flight mode. Well, it's been a ride, I'll tell you that. People ask me where my anger comes from. Sadness, shame, guilt, and grief that doesn't know how to get processed. The cortisol levels of people who live with and survive through narcissistic abuse The stress hormone levels that are estimated to be within my own body that I've been recovering from over the last month is estimated to, if you extracted it with a syringe and you could inject it into three to five other full grown adults, they would all be hospitalized. As I said, it's a healing journey, not specific to recovery. So, I'm choosing to let that go. I'm choosing to let all that go. Because the truth is, I'm not Tristan Peterson anymore. He died. And I can't keep pretending to go back to something or someone or a life or a little world that isn't mine. My best friend was right, very much so, when she nailed it and said, I don't know who I am. I am figuring that out. Best I can give you is I'm Scarlet Fox, Master of Locks. How to become a Master of Locks? Well, again, I've been raising myself without parental supervision since I was three years old. I was either constantly and consistently locked out of the house as a child constantly trying to climb in through windows and pick locks to get back in, or it was constantly locked inside trying to pick locks, trying to get out. Pretty damn sly with a lock pick. I ain't open gun bolts. I shouldn't say this too loudly to the world. I can even open ATMs too, it's the easiest fucking thing in the world. I actually could be the world's greatest thief if I chose to. I'm not a villain. Sometimes this little blue planet, well, I guess it's kind of green, the way I painted it. But the planet behind me is misinterpreted me as that. Due to the anger and the aggression, and the hyper-aggressive personality symptoms that I have, 
as I process through my emotions of the fact that now that I have recovered, the amnesia is healed, well, I get to be gifted with a full-blown goddamn eidetic memory. Kind of like read from uh, Criminal Minds. Now it's actually very hard for me to forget anything. I can remember straight back to being a little kid, little baby, being spoon-fed by my dad, slide on his, his, his spoon from the oatmeal he was giving me, he was trying to stick it in my mouth, I didn't want it. I never bonded with my parents, clearly. My body was grossed out and detested by his own spit, I remember. And for the longest time since, yeah, I used to bite a spoon with just my teeth because I didn't want my lips touching that shit. All based off a memory from when I was little, like one. There's a short period of time from ages one to three where I was taken away from my parents by the doctors, trying to figure out what the fuck was going on with my health and how I was being abused. To which they couldn't determine it and they just gave me back to my parents. Thanks for that. It's starting to make sense why I grew up surrounding myself by weapons. Anything that would make me feel safe. Living 40 years in fight or flight mode, warrior mode. I'm tired of being dubbed a villain. So, we're gonna go with Scarlet Fox, Master of Locks. World's most famous and renowned, reformed villain, hero. I'm not too much for titles. I'm still figuring out what I want to call myself. This is who I am, and that's my story. I can be Peter Parkour when I'm dressed up like Spider-Man running around on rooftops. In my heart, my superpower, the main thing I was gifted with beyond figuring out how to open up doors. I'm a sigil. And if I can do anything for this tiny little plant beside me, it would be to gift all of you with your passions and your dreams to come true. In ways that I have only ever prayed could exist. The truth is, I've I've had everything I could have ever wanted. I've had four beautiful families that I've been blessed with. I've raised seven successful kids. I have a best friend who nurtured me back to health. Through times, trials and tribulations, that I put her through, she did not deserve. She loved me anyway. It taught me that I can love myself. So, Sigil Raven Wolf, it's gonna stand here today and give that love back to the world. And I ask all of you, if you have the strength, the courage, the determination, and the passion to heal and love again, to join me. Because it doesn't matter what you've been through. A lot of you are light workers. You're not a dark worker like I am. There are light workers and there are dark workers. I'm learning how to work in the light. Not specifically my forte. Given that when I was a small child, my father taught me how to hunt by ripping the head off an animal while it was alive and throwing it at me. And laughing at me because it freaked me the fuck out. I 
light workers don't belong in the dark. You take people like me and you bring me out. Now it's time for me to return the favor. Thank you for listening. Thank you for healing me. And thank you to the men and the women who have inspired me and crafted me as the person I am. I love each and every one of you so much. And I know it's not my world to save, but the people who live on it, you are my universe. And you give me incredible powers. And I'm going to return the favor. I love you. Intrinsically. Especially my best friend, son and daughter. And my mom. My grandparents who raised me. Even my alcoholic father. This little blue planet's not going to make it. Unless we all do something together. It's time to change the world. 